Well, more travel disruptions are coming to Canada's busiest airport, Toronto's Pearson International. This time, though, they are planned. So if you have a flight booked around the March break upcoming or even for this summer, you'll want to keep an eye out for cancellations. The airport authority says it's putting hard limits on the number of arrivals and departures at peak times. Megan Fitzpatrick is on that story for us today. What exactly is, uh, is the plan at the airport, Megan? Yeah, well, they do say they're putting these hard caps now on the number of flights that can arrive and depart in any given hour at the airport. Now, that's for commercial flights, but they also say they're putting limits also on business and general aviation flights as well. Another measure they say are limits on the number of passengers who can arrive from international destinations and also depart to U.S. destinations, again, in each terminal in any given hour. Um, now, the GTAA, the Greater Toronto Airport Authority, which operates Pearson, says these measures are meant to strike a balance between the commercial interests of airlines but also the capabilities of the entire airport ecosystem, they say. And of course, there are multiple players in that ecosystem, including the airlines, including the Canada Border Service Agency, the U.S. Border Agency. Um, but this is one of the questions, Heather, is will these measures mean that some passengers who have flights coming up, will they be affected by this and will they be cancelled? Uh, in a statement from Air Canada, they say that they'll work with their industry partners to meet the requirements of airports. This includes, as in this case, adapting our schedules as required, which we have done. We always notify customers directly of any changes. And again, these measures were announced yesterday and we're basically just days away from March break. Uh, this uh, aviation expert from McGill University questions the timing of the announcement of these measures. Take a listen. It is the right move. You know, the question is timing. Uh, I think that, you know, Pearson Airport has taken note of the fact that you know, its capacity is limited, uh, that its infrastructure cannot maintain or cannot support uh, the flight schedules that have been proposed. It, to my opinion, it's they've seen what the schedules are and, and they're saying, whoops, we've, we've got too many planes coming in here. And how there's not just canceled flights that have been problems for travelers in recent months. It's also an issue of baggage, too. We've heard nightmare stories from travelers about having their baggage lost or having to wait hours at the airport to pick up their bags or having to wait at the on the plane at the gate before they're allowed off. All of these kinds of problems. And GTAA says they're also taking measures on the baggage front. Um, saying that they brought in an outside firm to do what they're calling a health check on the baggage system at Pearson. They'll do an assessment that'll be completed at some point this spring. And they say they're also looking at implementing AI technology to help uh, reduce some of those delays at the gates. But they do say, again, the whole baggage issue is not entirely their fault <laughs> at the airport. They say it's uh, a, a system that involves both airport infrastructure as well as the airlines. And they say they are working with the airlines to ensure they they have adequate staffing levels to handle the baggage at the airport, Heather. I'm noticing it's a little quiet behind you. We should probably tell people where you are. Union Station, that's the, the, uh, the station for Up Express, the train that takes people from downtown Toronto out to Pearson International. But there have been people to whom you've been speaking and asking them about their experiences and maybe even their grievances from dealing with people and, and the experience at Pearson. What are they telling you, Megan? Yeah, I mean, mixed stories, really. It kind of depends on the day and, and the passenger because sometimes people have a completely stress-free experience going through Pearson uh, and others don't. So we spoke to one gentleman who has had his flight canceled three days in a row. He's trying to get home to Edmonton and he's not been having much luck. So he was on the way to uh, the airport hoping his flight actually leaves today. Here's some of what he and another passenger had to tell us. It's been pretty difficult, honestly, with uh, with the traveling, especially especially through the Pearson Airport. I found it's been uh, I've been in through this airport three times in the past year, and I think I've had delays or cancellations every time. It was fine. Um, it didn't seem to be a ton of traffic. I was able to um, get right off, get through customs. I'm coming from Florida, um, and get through. 
Yeah, that woman uh, is an American and has been traveling through Pearson a few times, and she actually had positive things to say about it, Heather. In comparison to other airports, she says she frequently travels through uh, in the United States. So she was happy with Pearson. She's happy with the Up Express that goes straight there, saying the public transit infrastructure is good. So that was a, a good experience for her. But again, it hasn't been the same uh, for many other travelers over recent months. And you know, last fall, Pearson was rated one of the worst airports in North America, according to a survey. Again, these measures announced yesterday meant to try and alleviate some of these pressures in problems that travelers have been facing uh, when things will pick up and get busier for March break and the summer travel season. Well, the train is in the station, Megan, so there are more people to whom you can speak. I'll let you go and do that. We'll talk later on in the morning. Uh, Megan Fitzpatrick with a look ahead to what's in store at Pearson International.